Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today I've got an extra special video for you. We're gonna be checking out Smart EQ3 from Sonable. This is a big, big step up from Smart EQ2 and it's really, really impressive. And that's why I'm excited. You can probably hear it in my voice. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and set up this project file, which is the project file you heard in the beginning or the intro to this video. And to do that, I'm gonna be using multiple instances of Smart EQ3. And one of the big new features of this EQ is that it has interplugin communication, which you can use to manipulate the different EQs with the new groove feature. Uh, there's a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and get into it. So what I'm gonna do is drop an instance as a Smart EQ3 on these drums, and it is resizable, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so we can see easier. And Smart EQ3, the purpose of it is to use machine learning or AI, as it's commonly referred to, to help enhance the spectral balance of incoming audio. So the first thing we need to do is choose a profile to help arm the machine-based algorithm to do its job better. If you, what you're processing isn't on the list inside of here, you can actually just choose universal and use that. But I have drums, so I'm gonna choose drums. And then I'm gonna click right here and it's gonna wait for audio to come in to analyze it and then make some decisions on how to better enhance the spectral balance of what it hears. All right, so it already sounds better and that's awesome. That's what it's meant to do. Now, one of the new features of Smart EQ3 is you can actually have two bands here. So this is the Smart Filter and it's a high resolution filter. There are a lot of different points in here, as you can tell, and I can adjust the um, intensity or the strength. I can invert it if I wanted to, and I can actually roll off this low end if I wanted to as well, or the high end. I have a lot of control. And actually, if I'm hovering over here, I can use my mouse wheel. It's essentially the Q value. I can easily shorten it or cut it or make it smaller. And we can have all those controls down here at the bottom too. Before moving forward, if I double click anywhere, I can add a regular point and then I can choose, you know, what type of filter I want and so on and so forth and double click to get rid of it. You can have up to 24 of those. So you can use it just like a regular EQ with up to 24 filter points. I'm not gonna be doing that right now for this particular one, but what I do wanna do is actually split up the smart EQ filter here. And if I hit this button right here, it will give me two. So I think it's a little bit too heavy on the bass and that kick because I already have a really big booming bass in this project. So what I'm gonna do is with that second one added, I'm gonna pull it down and just reduce the strength of it. And then I'm gonna open this one up and leave the strength pretty high. So let's listen to that now. much better and it's a big workflow boost and if you've watched my videos for a while you know that that is a huge win for me whenever i can do things quicker and still get amazing results i'm all for it and smart eq3 is doing it for me so let's just keep moving here i've got another percussive element here in this track and i'm going to move pretty quickly now just because i want to get to the group section here so i'm just going to do the same thing i'm coming to drums hit record and just or learn and let it play Great, let's keep going. And now I have this sort of synthy mess, almost like a bass, but I'm gonna actually run the universal profile on it just because I'm not quite sure what it is. So again, learn. Sweet. Let's move on to the bass now. 
massive base hit there. So I'm gonna come in and choose the base profile. Okay, so this one, it's doing sort of the same thing. It is a little bit boomy, that bass, and it's rolled off a bunch of the low end here. But what I'm gonna do is again, just split that band. This is such a handy feature being able to split it up like that because I do like what it's doing in the upper frequencies here. In fact, I wanna boost it, but I don't like what it's doing or how much it's rolling off over here. So I wanna bring this over a little bit closer and I can really focus in on what I'm doing here and then just reduce the cutoff. So I'm still getting a big subby hit, but it feels tighter. And again, a couple of clicks, Smart EQ3 did it for me. And then finally, I've got a piano over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And inside of Smart EQ3, there is a keys profile, learn. Do you hear how it's removed that kind of resonant frequency right around, I don't know, what's this around 300 Hertz here? It's just, it makes it cleaner. It does add a little bit of bass and I like that. I like the presence it gives inside of the piano, but it really, the troubling resonant frequency, it's identified that and removed it for me. Uh, maybe we can reduce it. And again, if I wanted to, I can come in and you know reduce it a little bit more again i'm using my mouse wheel to really crank up that q value oh yeah night and day so this is already next level in terms of what the smart eq3 is but they went even further and they did that with the join group here uh, so i'm just going to call it mix and i'm just going to create it and you'll see here that I have the piano here and I've got three different levels. And this is where this element should be in the mix. So if I want it front and center, so things like, you know, your lead guitar or your vocal, if you have one, or your lead synth, if that's what you're making an EDM instrumental, you want to put that on L1. And what that's going to do is Smart EQ3 is actually going to push that to the front. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, there's interplug in communication. So I can actually pull in the other Smart EQ instances and arrange them inside of here. So I've got my bass hit. That's probably going to be in the back. I've got that sort of weird synthy sound. I've got that extra percussion and I've got my drums. So let's see what this sounds like. Oh, probably should unsolo that. I'm going to make it bigger. So what this is doing is intelligent cross-channel processing that corrects cluttered and clashing frequency regions within the group of up to six channels. You can then assign any one of the Smart EQ instances to a priority layer. And for example, if you have something in layer one, the Smart EQ will make sure there's no frequency collisions with something in layer three. You can hear it there. It's actually doing a really good job. And I can in introduce more sort of processing or the level of it by increasing this value over here. And I'm gonna pull it up way high just so we can really hear the bypass difference, but uh, it's really, really sweet. So here it is at 150 in, certain, in terms of group impact. And bypassed. Now watch what I can do, and I can actually do this on the fly. I can actually take, say, these drums and move them to the top, take that piano and put it way in the back, and you can really hear the dynamics. And again, I'm gonna leave it at 150 just so you can really hear what's going on. I, you know, I probably never push it that far because I pretty much have my mix where it should be anywhere or where I want it to be, and this is just further enhancing what I had in my mind.
So you can hear there that now those extra percussions are actually in the front and that piano or those keys are pushed back further in the mix. Now the differences are subtle, but that's what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be giving just a subtle difference between where these elements are and the, whether they're in the forefront or the background. So I really want the keys up front. I like that percussion up front too. Now I'm stopping and starting just so you can really hear and just that first kind of hit there, but you can do this on the fly and just really tone in or zero in what the best balance is in terms of where your elements are inside of the levels. You can have up to six instances inside of here. And look, you can even have just two levels if you want it as well. Another cool thing you can do is relearn anything by hitting the button while it's playing, or you can relearn everything right here. It is just really, really cool. I'm digging it, I'm digging it so much. I'm having fun just moving things around and you can really start to get an idea of what fits best where, you know what I mean? Oh, so cool. I might bring these drums down again and that bass push it back. And then of course you can relearn anyone as I said, or you can get rid of it. Uh, you can turn these off, so like the group, um, further processing, you can bypass that here, or you can bypass everything, which would be all of the different EQs at once uh, right here as well. You can also get rid of the group completely and so on and so forth. So it's just really, really cool. This, this whole feature right here, I've been having a lot of fun testing it. And the fact that during my test on an already pretty tight mix, it's improved it so much. It's just, it's just so good to hear. All right, so there you go. A quick look at the Smart EQ3 from Sonable. It got released today, so this is kind of a first look video. Definitely go click that link in the video description to find out full details about this incredible plugin. And as always, I'm Joshua Casper here with Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.